Welcome back to Movies in Short. Today, we'll recap a 2022 sci-fi drama movie called Rubicon. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. The movie opens in 2056. The world's environment has deteriorated beyond repair and only the rich can afford the luxury to live in air domes, which filter the contaminated air from the outside. Corporations have replaced the governments and states, with corporate armies resolving disputes over territories and resources. All attempts to find refuge in space have failed. Nebra Corporation owns the last extraterrestrial search base that still searches for solution to the environmental crisis. A Nebra shuttle, Vesta-1, flies by, with Commander Hannah Wagner and Dr. Gavin Abbott on board. They are headed towards the Rubicon space station and are in direct communication with Commander Jensen and Tracy, who are assisting them with their arrival. There's a sudden malfunction in the navigational AI of Vesta-1, which prompts Wagner to take manual control, despite Jensen's protest that Wagner should let the AI called Navicon to do the docking. She refuses and manages to safely dock. Jensen pauses the video feed and notices a mark behind Wagner's ear, which only soldiers have. Tracy and Jensen are confused as to why Nebra would send a soldier. They go and meet them, explaining that the error in the Navicon must have happened on ground control's end. Tracy goes to investigate why Navicon lost connection to the shuttle. Wagner and Abbott get acquainted with the rest of the crew. Some of the crew members are condescending towards Gavin and wonder why someone like him decided to come here and not stay in the comfort of his dome, where the food and everything is better. Dr. Abbott says it wasn't his choice and that he wouldn't come voluntarily to this old piece of junk. Commander Jensen shows Hannah the new flight route for tomorrow which was changed, because of a strange fog cluster in the Northern Hemisphere, with hundreds of reported fatalities. Dr. Abbott gets concerned, as that's where his friends and family are. Jensen, Tracy and a few other crew members set off to investigate the situation on the ground through a shuttle. Hannah goes to talk with her superiors in Nebra and gets told to move on with her mission and extract Icarus, the algae system that grows on the ship. She goes to do as she is told, but gets interrupted by Dr. Dimitri Krillo, just as Jensen calls in from Vesta 2. He says they can't contact ground control and that they are flying in blind. Wagner attempts to contact Nebra and ground control, but gets no response back either. Jensen's shuttle has also lost their Navicon AI, so they have to take control and land manually, which they are not trained to do. Dr. Krillo's son is on board Jensen's vessel. Hannah gets to work to re-establish connection with ground control, thinking they might not be receiving their signal, she goes out to check the optical unit outside the space station. As she works on the receiver, she hears distorted audio coming from Jensen's capsule, who is screaming Mayday, as the capsule starts burning up. They hear horrifying screams as the communication abruptly ends. Hannah looks towards the earth and notices the mysterious fog spreading rapidly. She goes back and rushes to see if anyone can hear them, but no success. Two days pass and there is still zero communication with any station around the globe. Hannah says the lasers can't get through the thick fog from either direction, which is what is blocking all the communication. Hannah tries to give food and talk with Dimitri about the algae, and the limited oxygen tanks they have on the Rubicon, but he's still mourning the loss of his son and does not want to talk with anyone. Meanwhile, Dr. Abbott gets woken up by an analysis of the fog on the computer. He goes to check just as Hannah tries to fix an old radio transmitter and asks for Gavin's assistance. Dr. Abbott leaves, but heads directly towards the airlock instead, without protective suit on, to try and kill himself after witnessing what he just saw on the monitor. Hannah sees him on the cameras and rushes in to stop him. Dr. Krillo hears the commotion and comes to assist as well. Hannah attempts to bypass the locking mechanism on the door, but Dimitri tries to stop her, saying she will destroy it and kill them all if she does that. They depressurize the ship and finally open the door. They try to give Gavin CPR to resuscitate him, and are successful, as Gavin starts breathing again. They take him to rest in the medical bay of the ship. Dimitri gets in a heated argument with Hannah about her actual purpose here with the algae, and that he is aware of her intentions. She goes back to work on the radio transmitter when she spots Gavin in the corner of her eye. Dimitri joins her as they find Gavin overlooking the fog-covered planet. He goes in a panic attack as they approach him. He explains that the fog is toxic and that no one will be able to survive it. After they calm him down, Dimitri talks with Hannah and asks her if she has any family down there. She says she has a little sister. He apologizes as it most likely means she has died because of the fog. Hannah says none of it matters as they will suffocate up here anyway. Dimitri says they won't, as he and his son managed to achieve a working symbiosis with the algae. Hannah says that even if the air down on Earth is toxic, people can still survive in bunkers. She says the lasers might not reach them, but an old ISS radio system might. 
she just needs to reactivate the antenna outside to find out. She does exactly that, with Dimitri's help, and goes back to check if anyone else can hear them through the radio, but they are greeted by dead silence again. At the same time, Gavin wakes up. He says the fog most likely appeared from some kind of chain reaction like permafrost gases. He also says the people living in the domes will not survive either, as they are not designed for this type of emergency. Hannah says there are bunkers especially designed for situations like this. But Gavin is not convinced, as they have limited supplies of food and oxygen and when that runs out, they are just as dead. He says they are walking breathing corpses, with very limited time, but Hannah says they can stay as long as they want on the Rubicon, as the algae gas exchange works. But Gavin says he can't live trapped in a metal box like this for the rest of his life. Dimitri speaks and tells Gavin what he does with his life is his decision, but if he attempts to kill himself again and succeeds, he will be killing Hannah and Dimitri as well, since the ship is designed for six-man crew which produce CO2, which gets converted back to oxygen. The bare minimum for efficient gas exchange is three people. Later, Hannah sits by Gavin and says she worked her ass off her whole life, didn't even take a day off or party at all. She says the end result was not worth it and that she really screwed her life by not actually living. Gavin says his life wasn't any different and says that Dimitri's probably the same. They have more small talk which leads to them kissing and sleeping together. Five weeks later, the planet has been completely covered in the strange fog. Hannah inspects the algae which has gotten strange brown spots, but Dimitri reassures her that it's normal. As Hannah leaves, he gets a sample from the algae to inspect and gets a very different color than usual. Later, the three play cards and drink booze to kill time. As Hannah walks back to her cabin she hears an incoming call and rushes to pick up. A group of survivors located in a bunker underneath Nebra headquarters have contacted them. Hannah wakes Gavin and Dimitri. They contact the survivor's representative, Esther, who says there are approximately 300 people in the bunker all of which are CEOs and their families, but their oxygen is slowly running out. Meanwhile, Dimitri inspects the algae again which continues to deteriorate. Gavin and Hannah join him and explain that there are openings in the fog which is why they were able to make contact, and it can also allow Hannah to go down and bring some of Dimitri's algae to them, since the oxygen in the bunker can only last them for three more weeks, at best. They get in a heated argument, with Dimitri not wanting to risk everyone's life. Hannah gets sick and Dimitri takes her to the med bay for blood analysis. Later, Gavin and Hannah join Dimitri and say they are preparing to depart with his approval or not. But Dimitri finally reveals the state of the algae. He says Hannah's pee and hormones affect it, implying she is pregnant. But Hannah says it's impossible as all soldiers are sterile till the end of their days. But Dimitri says it's possible, if her hormone inducer loses connection with its control unit for long enough time. He finishes by saying the algae is fine, but the baby growing inside her won't be able to survive the trip down to earth. Hannah is determined and says they will leave tomorrow. She goes to practice landing through a simulation, but fails it. Gavin joins her and wants to talk her out of it, but she is determined and says she can't raise a baby here with him and Dimitri. Gavin says maybe this one won't have a chance, but insinuates that maybe they can make a baby when they are down there. She laughs it off and stops practicing, having succeeded 8 out of 10 times in the simulations. Dimitri prepares the algae as they board the last Vesta capsule, but as they are about to depart, a sudden malfunction happens in the engine as the jets stop responding from overheat. They rush out as they try to salvage the situation. They notice the Vesta's cooling system has stopped working 11 hours ago, which is why the tanks are overheating. Dimitri suggests to dump the tanks manually which prompts Gavin to rush there, but Hannah says it's far too dangerous as the capsule could blow up at any second. Hannah makes the difficult decision to decouple the Vesta 1, which explodes moments later. Depressed, Gavin walks by her in silence. Dimitri joins Hannah later and tells her she did the right thing, as Gavin would have died if he boarded. She asks him what it's like to have a child, to which he simply replies with loud, nerve-wrecking and exhausting, but also amazing. Gavin contacts Esther to deliver the bad news. Hannah walks by the algae when she notices traces leading to the cooling, she opens only to find someone has disconnected it from Vesta's system. She goes and confronts Dimitri, saying they almost died because of his selfishness. Hannah says they will pump the Icarus symbiosis culture and fly down with the Rubicon directly, as the last resort. Dimitri comes to the conclusion that Nebra knew a catastrophe was coming, as all of a sudden they need the algae and sent a professional soldier to fetch it for them. They just decided not to tell anyone, so they wouldn't have to share their bunkers with other people. They contact Esther and tell her they are sending the algae lab down. 
Hannah says she wants to speak with one of the soldiers in the bunkers as Icarus is a military operation, but Esther tells her there's no soldiers there, as the bunker has limited space for only 300 people, which means they left the soldiers outside to die. Hannah's sister is a soldier, which means she was left to die outside, so the CEOs and close relatives of Nebra can have space inside the bunkers. Gavin goes after Hannah and says they can't just ignore 300 people with children in there. Hannah says there is a child right here which will be doomed and that she shouldn't care, as they said they wouldn't have, for her life. Hannah's maternal instincts kick in as she considers raising the child here wouldn't be so bad. As a soldier, she never had a choice before or the privilege to raise a family. Hannah carves out her soldier sign behind her ear and lies down to rest, just as Gavin enters Dimitri's lab and initiates the procedure to pump the Icarus symbiosis. Hannah rushes to Gavin who has tied Dimitri and prepared for their departure. Seeing it's too late to stop him, Hannah straps in next to Dimitri as Gavin initiates the countdown. Gavin straps in, but after a few moments, Hannah reconsiders and removes her straps and attempts to stop the launch. Gavin tries to prevent her, but gets put in an arm lock as Hannah continues and aborts the procedure. She releases him and tells him she can't go through with it and destroys the launch system. Later, Rubicon receives message from Esther, but Hannah shuts down the communication instead, knowing they can't help them anymore. She goes to look for Gavin who is nowhere to be seen. She finally finds him in the airlock again, but far too late, as he has taken his own life. They give him a space funeral. Hannah tells Dimitri they need to fix the launch system and go down to Earth, since they are only two people now which is not enough to sustain the CO2 conversion. Gavin forced his will on them after all. Dimitri is shocked as the reason he said that before is so that Gavin wouldn't harm himself, they don't actually need three breathers on board to sustain the algae. Years later, Hannah has given birth to a girl named Knopf, named after her late sister. They go to sleep when Knopf wakes up and walks around the ship. She hears an incoming radio transmission and picks up. She hears the voice of other children saying they are outside and are looking for other survivors. We get one last view at Earth, which has been cleared from most of the fog and the air is breathable again. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell if you want to watch more videos like this. Thanks and see you again soon.